So this video is a little bit different. So rather than coming from my cluttery little office in Oxford, today I'm coming from San Francisco, so a little bit further away from home. Now, most people, when they come to San Francisco, top of the to-do list is to go to Alcatraz, and that's of particular interest to me as a forensic psychiatrist. So off today, I'll take you along. So we are on Alcatraz now. So Alcatraz dates back to, well, it was fortified in the 1800s. It was then a military prison in the late 1800s. And then it was between, for only 29 years actually, between 1934 and 1963, that it was a maximum security federal prison. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see how this compares to my perception of what modern day prisons are like. This is one of the cells that's open, so you can get in here and actually have an idea of what the scale is like. So you can see that if I put my arms out, pretty much touch each side, I can touch the ceiling. So it can't be any more than sort of five feet wide. I would say that this is smaller than what you see in conventional prison cells nowadays. You know, interestingly, a lot of these all seem to be single cells, which again is not really the norm in prison in most of the time, but you usually have at least one other person in there with you. This is solitary confinement. So people will be put in here if they're particularly violent, broken rules and things like that. So not only are you on your own in this tiny, 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 dark, really cold, probably very, very smelly room, but there is no lighting whatsoever. It is dark. You have no circadian rhythm, no day-night cycle left. You don't know what time it is. You don't know what day it is. It's just you and your thoughts and this. Yeah, by today's standards, so that would be deemed a breach of human rights. So this is the visitation bit. So you can see it's through perspex glass. There's no touching, no emotions, no feeling, no human contact, please. No humanity. Interestingly, going through the cell blocks, there's some similarities with how modern day prisons are like. So you've got like three different levels. That's quite common having three different spares. Most prisons nowadays have got sort of two people in them rather than single cells. Um, but actually there's quite a lot of similarities, which makes sense to me because it was functioning as a federal prison between sort of the 1930s and the 1960s. And a lot of prisons nowadays, at least in the UK, were sort of built during that era as well. So you structurally you see a lot of similarities. One thing that is very different though is most prisons nowadays don't have a backdrop like this. I mean, this is utterly ridiculous. So I suppose I'm left wondering a little bit you see some of the bars and some of the windows on these places and if you were an inmate here looking out of the bars and looking out of the windows at this view at San Francisco being so close and a life of normality I don't know it kind of brings the perspective of your lack of freedom into the forefront I think I'm just trying to think of what actually must be going through people's minds when they look out of the window at something like that got this continued theme everywhere of these beautiful gardens and beautiful greenery and lots of discussions around how inmates would be responsible for doing the gardens and actually the the, the rehabilitationist in me as a forensic psychiatrist really believes in the power of things like gardening as part of people's care plans and therapeutic, um, sort of therapeutic interventions and recovery there's something to be said for a bit of behavioral activation of getting out into nature and doing stuff as well as building up some functional living skills because it's about rehabilitation right it's not always about punishment or it should be i will just say that the psychoanalyst side of me can't help but be quite fascinated by somewhere that's spent so many decades focused on punishment of some of the most prolific offenders 
around this part of America is now has such a wonderfully big focus on conservation and rehabilitation both the birds and the plant species around here and the care that's taken over them is quite incredible something about trying to undo and repair past mistakes like a lot of psychoanalysis though there's also the argument that i'm completely overthinking it See, so just read this, working under the guard tower inside barbed wire fences inmate gardens developed this hillside into flowering gardens. So there was actually a real rehabilitation focus to this, more so than I think you'd find in a lot of prisons nowadays. very interesting some of the similarities between the forensic psychiatry systems and the prisons right just reading about how the initial approach of Alcatraz was about removing people that were deemed undesirable dangerous from society but then towards the latter stages there being the shift towards a focus on rehabilitation the idea being that you know the goal is actually to release these people back into the community where they can be sort of uh, productive members of society that end up adding some value um, and it's just there's parallels, I think, with the asylum system that we had for psychiatry, where, you know, asylums at one point were designed to try and take people with mental illness, remove them from mainstream society, and they basically spent the rest of their lives living there with very little in the way of treatment options available. So there wasn't much of an end in sight. And then when we developed medications for mental illness, there was also this change in attitude that says, no, we actually need to focus on rehabilitation and trying to move treatment and care into the community and integrating people with mental illness into mainstream society. I often find in forensic psych, there's a bit of a tension sometimes between health, so me as a psychiatrist and the justice system, but there's also some real parallels. I mean, this lot are everywhere. I mean, they're huge. This doesn't really do it justice to how big they are. Um, and I hate birds. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm terrified, terrified, terrified of birds. These seagulls are quite smug though. They're better than the ones you find in like Cornwall in the UK because they're dicks who like steal your ice cream and stuff. These are relatively docile at least. Look at them just everywhere. A couple of things about some of the more famous inmates that have been here. Al Capone is probably the, the most famous inmate that's been here. He spent around about 30 years here, but a substantial portion of that time was actually in the hospital. He had a diagnosis of neurosyphilis. So this is where syphilis, the famous sexually transmitted infection that unfortunately in the last 10 years or so has been on the rise again. Over the course of about 20, 30 years, when it's not detected and not treated, starts to affect the brain. And it can manifest in a variety of different ways. Some people get depressed, but most people get manic and psychotic. The closest comparison, I would say, to modern conventional diagnoses would be schizoaffective disorder. Though there are still some countries where neurosyphilis does still get seen, but now it's sort of in the UK and most developed countries, it's rare as hen's teeth. The other one was Robert Stroud, known as the Birdman. He was like an ornithologist before he ended up in prison. Apparently, he was formally diagnosed with psychopathy. And if you go back to the third edition of the DSM, psychopathy was a medical diagnosis. It isn't any more. Psychopathy nowadays is really thought to represent a severe subset of antisocial personality disorder. Some specific cognitions and behaviours that are thought to massively increase somebody's risk of reoffending and actually aren't always that amenable to treatment. But Robert Stroud famously was diagnosed with psychopathy. And that is pretty much the island. I've tried to give you a tour of all the main bits and it's interesting to see the parallels between not just how this prison is now compared to modern day prisons, but also some of the history of this place and how it aligns with some of the history of psychiatry, particularly around asylum culture. Now, Alcatraz closed its door as a federal prison back in 1963. It's hail and farewell to Alcatraz. The Dread Rock in San Francisco Bay plays host to the press on its closing day. Probably a good job that it did. You know, the function of any prison is to try and protect the public by containing people that are deemed a risk to the public, but also to then try and rehabilitate the inmates that are here so that they can eventually be functioning um, 
and, and positive members and positive contributors to society. But there was a series of escapes, some of which apparently have no idea if they were successful because they never found these people again, some of which definitely weren't successful, and some of which where some prison officers died. It really sent the message home that Alcatraz, as much as it was designed to be this impenetrable, inescapable fortress, was now penetrable and was now escapable. It was no longer fit for purpose at protecting the public or rehabilitating the inmates that were here. Wearing handcuffs and leg irons, the last 27 of its 1,500 prisoners leave the crumbling, unsalvageable fortress for more modern federal penitentiaries. I hope you liked. Do let me know what you thought in the comments below and I will see you for another video very, very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.